You can also see the Mike Florio Show prior to this one on NBCSN and his website. It's the talk of the town. It's Pro Football Talk, and uh, Mike Florio joins us now. Mike, how are you? Dan, doing great, buddy. I like the new name for the show. The hell with Pro Football Talk Live. Mike Florio Show sounds a hell of a lot better. Yeah. Thank you for approving that change. Yes, yes, yes. It should be. It should be. <laughs> it should be Pro Football Talk with Mike Florio or Mike Florio's Pro Football Talk. I don't know. The less I'm involved in it by name, maybe the more people will actually. Yeah, but it's like watch the, it. the Tonight Show with. Jay Leno or Johnny Carson or the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. That's what we're trying to get for you, Mike. Well, that works. Well, I'll take that. I'll right. take that. All right. I got a few things here. The uh, owners' meetings, what, are, what will happen this week today at the owners' meetings? Well, you know, it's funny. What they're primarily doing, they're addressing all of the issues that were not resolved in March when they took up as the first order of business approving the Raiders' move to Las Vegas and then got the hell out of Arizona <laughs> before anybody changed their mind or bothered to ask, why are we doing this? So they've got some things they need to deal with more than they usually deal with in May. The overtime reduction from 15 minutes to 10 minutes, a rule change that was just forgotten back in March that the competition committee had proposed to allow – teams to hire coaches whose current teams are still in the postseason. That's been like a joke in recent years where Kyle Shanahan, everybody knew he was going to be the 49ers coach, for example, earlier this year. They want to potentially get rid of that rule. Some other things floating around, like two players on injured reserve who can come back in any given year. So some items that just got lost in the cracks as they got out of Arizona as quickly as they could back in late March. All right, a couple other things that I have. Um, let me start with overtime. That we keep tweaking it. If it's supposed to be uh, reduced from 15 to 10 minutes because of player safety, why do we have overtime at all, Mike? Well, and you know what? That's a great point. We have overtime because people don't like ties. But I, I think that this move, Dan, is all about one thing and one thing only, taking off of the table one of the criticisms of short week football, because any time it's explained now, the latest item at NFL.com, the league-owned me, uh, uh, media platform, and there's been explanations like this from people like Rich McKay, the chair of the competition committee. They say we never know when that team is going to play again, and they may be playing on a Thursday night. And I really do think that this is all about not player safety big picture. This is about those very rare occasions. We saw it last year. Tampa Bay played the Raiders nearly the full 75 minutes, had to play Thursday night against the Falcons. When that happens, what's the consequence? Guys like you, guys like me, others in the media say, here's a reason why maybe Thursday night football isn't the best thing for the NFL to do. It bolsters the arguments against it. So you take away one of the arguments against it by reducing that maximum of 75 minutes down to 70 minutes. And I think that's what this is all about eliminating ways that people like us can complain about short week football and also players complaining about recovery time and whatnot. And that's what I think this is. So they're going to accept more ties. You're going to have unintended consequences like a team that wins the kickoff, getting the ball and slamming on the brakes and dinking and dunking down the field and kicking a field goal with one or two minutes left on the clock or no time left on the clock. And that's why I think if they do this, they need to do it on an experimental basis so they can see some of those unintended consequences come to fruition. And celebrations, are we are going to loosen up, lighten up a little bit here? That was another one, Dan, that got lost in the shuffle in March. There was a lot of talk in advance of the meetings about what may or may not change, and then nothing changed. And they, they claim they're going to change something, but I don't know what they're going to do. It's one thing to say, hey, we're – we're sick of being criticized for being the no-fun league. When you're gonna, we're going to change. Well, what are you going to do? You ultimately have to have a rule. Whatever mm -hmm. the rule is, you have to have a rule, and it has to be consistently enforced. And I'm a firm believer you need to take the officials out of it altogether. Treat it as something that a player would get fined for if he does cross the line, not something where the official has to decide in the heat of the moment. Do I pull out the flag? Do I not pull out the flag? You've got 15 yards of field position riding on that knee-jerk decision. You've got discretion that they now expect the officials to exercise i say get rid of the penalty altogether make it a fine and and have a line in place where the league office knows when they look at the video whether or not the guy crossed it And if he did he gets a letter on tuesday saying that he's going to be making an involuntary contribution to the charity the nfl's choice he's mike florio from pro football talk joining us dan patrick show los angeles and the future of having a super bowl there is what well look here's the thing the stadium construction has already been delayed by a year. 
And so now it opens in 2020, the new stadium in Inglewood. And that's the year that it's supposed to host the Super Bowl. And uh, do you really want, and I keep stepping back and saying, why are the L.A. people pushing to keep the Super Bowl in the first year of the operation of a new stadium? You've got 20 games to be played between the Chargers and the Rams, and hovering over everything you do from the moment you cut the ribbon on the place, you know you, that you're finishing the year with the Super Bowl. Why do you want to put yourself through that kind of stress? Just push it back for a year, comply with the league rule. And I think the number one reason, Dan, to insist on compliance with that rule, that you have to have your stadium up and running for two years before you host a Super Bowl, ensuring that all of your security procedures are in place and that you can properly secure the building for a Super Bowl. Let the right people in, keep the wrong people out, ensure that nobody's going to be able to slip anything through, any gate, any opening, any weakness, any crack. You've got two full years to get to the point where you're confident that you can pull off a Super Bowl, that they should want to delay this thing to the 2021 season. I'm surprised they don't. Yeah, I agree with you because you want to make sure you're having the best product on display at the biggest moment in your franchise history. You're hosting the Super Bowl there. The last thing you – they almost feel like, hey, if we don't have it in 2020, then we never get it back. The NFL is going to reward you for everything that you've done to have two teams relocate in Los Angeles. Uh, one other thing here with Tom Brady, is the Brady-Giselle concussion story over? I think it is, because where does it go from here? Tom's going to keep his mouth shut about it, and by the next time he talks to the media, probably the week before the regular season opener when we're up in Foxborough for Chiefs-Patriots, he'll get asked about it, and he'll say, that's old news, that's been addressed, that's weeks ago, and we're focused on the upcoming season. That statement from Don Yee, even though it said nothing, Tom was not diagnosed with a concussion. Well, yeah, that's the problem. He wasn't diagnosed because he didn't get evaluated for a concussion. But that caused this thing to get put to bed. Some media outlets interpreted the statement as being he didn't have a concussion, which is fundamentally different from he wasn't diagnosed with a concussion. It was a master stroke. Tom found a way to tiptoe through the minefield, and now the next time he addresses it will be the first time he addresses it, and he'll say it's already been addressed. Yeah, but it hasn't been addressed, and you could say that to Brady. No, Tom, it hasn't been. Did you have a concussion? Not one diagnosed, did you have a concussion? Why did your wife say you've had numerous concussions, including one last year? I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's over. It shouldn't be. Well, I, I don't disagree with that, but you've got to think about the context where he'll be addressing it in a press conference where it's a shotgun approach, where it's one reporter after another. How many times are you going to be asked that same question, and you're going to have reporters who are going to move on to the next topic? Now, if it's a one-on-one -on -one hmm. where an agreement isn't made in advance that he's not going to be <laughs> asked about it, that's a different story altogether, but you know how that game goes. Yes, that's true. Now, and I'm not saying that about Brady. I'm just saying that generally – there were our requests made from time to time to avoid certain topics, and then you have to decide, do I agree to that, or I just say, screw it, I'm not doing the interview. Yeah, but, you know, Drew Brees coming on the show and saying he wouldn't tell his wife that he had a concussion. I, it, it feels like players are, are doing their best to hide concussions more now than they did, you know, 10 or 15 years ago because we weren't looking for it as much. Now we're looking. Now you really have to hide a concussion if, if that's what your goal is. And it's funny, Dan, in the 2015 season when Ben Roethlisberger tapped out of the game in Seattle when no one knew he was dealing with any concussion symptom, that was heralded as a sign that yeah. the culture has truly changed. No, no, it's, it's, it, he was an aberration. He's the one guy out of a thousand that will do that. Just because one guy does it doesn't mean that anyone else is going to do it. These guys want to play, and they know that if you step off of the field and the next man up comes in and does a good job, one thing leads to another, and all of a sudden you can't make the, the mortgage payment on your house anymore, and, uh, you know, you go get a real job for a living. So these guys are going to fight through it at, at every level of football. Think about an 18-year-old. Well, he knows he's not going to play in the NFL, but you know what? He's 18 and he wants to play football. He's going to have health problems when he's 63. So what? He's 18. He's not thinking about that. So that's the problem. Because you think about all the things we hear that are good about football, overcoming adversity, working with your teammates, no pain, no gain. It's counter to all of that to say, I'm sorry, I, I can't continue because I think I may have concussion symptoms. That's a fundamental problem that football faces at every level. And I think what happened last week with, Bra with Brady is just the, the most recent example of it. Thank you, Mike. That's uh, Mike Florio's Pro Football Talk on NBCSN. Thanks, Starring man. Mike Florio. Thank you, Mike. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.